If you didn't commit this murder, you'll go free. If you did, I'll see that you hang. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Oh, Miss Paladin. Well, good morning, Miss Wong. Miss Paladin, I was just coming to your room. Must see you on matter of great importance. Well, you look disturbed. Miss Paladin, you talk to lady for Miss Wong? Well, well, what lady? She very sick and now has great trouble. Could you see her, please? Miss Wong already tell her you will come. Well, if you think I should. Oh, very good. Come, please. Uh, uh, but, uh, Miss Wong, who is this lady? She's guest in hotel. Doctor come to her every day. She very sick in bed. No, she very sad. You see... In here, please. All right. Mrs. Thomas? Is Mr. Paladin? I told you he would come. Thank you, dear. Mr. Paladin? Mm. Is Mrs. Thomas? How do you do? Miss Wong says you'd like to talk to me. Yes. Won't you have a seat, Mr. Paladin? Thank you. Uh, Miss mm. Wong must go now. Oh, Miss Wong, I, I appreciate your bringing Mr. Paladin to see me. Thank you so much. Oh, you shall. Very welcome. Good morning. <laughs> Mr. Paladin, I'm Mrs. Clell Thomas. I've been under a doctor's care here in the hotel for several days. This morning, I received this telegram. It explains why I want to see you. You may read it. Here. <laughs> I'm holding Clell for murder of Bill Watkins. You should come home as soon as possible. Clell does not know I'm telegraphing you. Signed, Sheriff Miller. Clell, your husband? Yes. Uh. Mr. Paladin, I don't know what this is all about. And you want me to take you home, is that it? No, no, I've been ill and I couldn't possibly travel now. We live in Wairika. I want you to go there for me. I'll pay you one thousand dollars. A thousand? Why? What can I do? Prove that my husband didn't commit murder. Will you do it? What makes you think he didn't, Mrs. Thomas? A woman knows her husband. Clell is strong, impulsive. But Mr. Paladin, he he wouldn't commit murder. A mistake is being made. Please. All right, I'll do what I can. Tomorrow's the big day. Yes, tomorrow's CBS Radio's Red Header Day. As the redhead, Arthur Godfrey, returns to lead the parade of merriment and music on Arthur Godfrey time. Millions who have missed him during his convalescence are invited to tune in tomorrow to welcome him back. But Arthur's not the only reason tomorrow's going to be a big day on CBS Radio. That genial gentleman, Gary Moore, is coming back on CBS Radio with his own brand new daytime show. Starting tomorrow, you can enjoy the unique Gary Moore brand of blandishment five days a week, Monday through Friday. Arthur Godfrey and Gary Moore join House Party with Art Linkletter, Just Entertainment with Pat Buttram, Funny Side Up with Burt Parks, Hermione Gingold, Kenny Delmar and Parker Fennelly, and the rest of the CBS Radio Best Daytimes. Tomorrow's the day Arthur Godfrey returns and Gary Moore starts his new show. Don't miss them. Wairika, California was a long ride north from San Francisco through valleys of golden wheat and tall timothy. I spent half a day in the shadow of Mount Shasta and then beyond into the mountains, where I finally came to a bustling town of placer miners and leather-tongued bullwhackers. I pulled up at a hitch rail near the jail. 
Uh, huh. Well, we got room for two horses here. Come on, get over, boy. Come hey, on. Henry. Come on. Someone's pushing your horse around. Move. Yeah. I see him, Jack. Hey, stranger. Yep. Settle down, boy. Settle down. Hey, you. Yeah, I can hear without your hollering. If you're talking to me. He's a smart aleck kind, ain't he, Henry? Yeah, Jugger. I better teach him something. <laughs> hey, mister, that's my horse you kicked. That's a boy, Henry. I didn't kick that horse. Nobody touches my horse. I'm going to cut you open like a melon. You've had a little too much to drink, mister. Now put that knife away. You ain't going to take that, are you, Henry? No. No, I ain't. No, no, I listen. I warned you. Keep back. You, why are you I don't want to hurt you now, son. Come on. Hurt me? You ain't going to hurt me. Get I told you. <laughs> hey, Henry. Henry. Henry, you ain't getting up. You're his friend. You better dump him in that horse trough and get him sobered up. You didn't need to hit him so hard. He'll be all right. Hey, what's going on here? Let me do it. Let me do it. What time you got here, Sheriff? What happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened, Sheriff. Henry's been beat up. Yeah, I see that. This man did it. He came at me with a knife, Sheriff. Don't listen to him, Sheriff. This stranger rode in and started kicking Henry's horse around, and then he jumped Henry. Oh, he did, did he? Henry was only trying to protect himself. We don't cotton with troublemakers in this town, mister. What brings you here, anyway? I didn't start the trouble. I came here to see a man named Clell Thomas. You'll see him real soon, like. He's in the same cell that you're going to. I'm arresting you for assault and battery. On whose complaint? Right now, my own. And Henry Thomas is there when he wakes up. Thomas? Is he any relation to Clell Thomas? Yeah, his son. Now start walking. What's your name, mister? Paladin. Yeah, in here. You can hand over that gun, Paladin. It'll be real safe with me till you get out of jail. I guess I have no choice. Here. You say I'd be in the same cell as Mr. Thomas? That's right. I'm making it real convenient for you to talk to him. Brought you some company, Clell. Now you'll have someone to swear at besides me. All right. Come on, get in there. Jeb, what's the doctor say about Judge Baker? Uh, says he's well enough to hold the bail hearing. Oh, uh, it's about time. I've been waiting a week. When is it? This afternoon. Out the judge's ranch. Doc won't let him come to town. Uh, does the judge know I want the city council sitting as grand jury? He knows. He'll be there. Ah, oh, then it ought to come off just fine. Uh, Clell, this man I've arrested is named Paladin. Said he wants to talk to you. Yeah? Uh, what about? Your wife sent me. Mary? Where'd you see Mary? San Francisco. How is she? She's better, but she won't be able to travel for a few days. Oh. Well, there's one consolation. All this will be over with before she knows about it. If she knows about it now... She does. How? Oh. Well, someone... Someone sent her a telegram. <clears throat> uh, Clell, uh, maybe I better get this man out of Shut here. Shut up, Jeb. Who sent her a telegram, Paladin? She didn't tell me who it was. Why did she send you? She wants me to prove that you didn't commit murder. Jeb, why'd you arrest this man? He beat up on Henry. Henry? Is he all right? He's all right, Clell. Don't worry. Mister, you stay away from my son. If you don't, you'll have to answer to me. And you better teach him some manners. Jeb, I want this man out of here. Sure, Clell. I'll turn him loose if you say so. And you, Paladin. I want you out of town in an hour. Look, your wife has hired me to come here, and I won't leave until my job is finished. My wife doesn't run my affairs, Paladin. I do. And I don't need you or anybody else to keep me from the short end of a rope. I'll get out of this in my own way. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should because There's filter blend up front Up front ahead of the filter And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend 
Filter blend means fine tobacco. Filter blend up front. And the flavor you get in the Winston cigarette comes from Filter Blend. Filter Blend is a mighty good reason for you to smoke Winston. Because it means tobacco's specially processed for filter smoking. A Winston secret. You get Winston's own pure white modern filter, plus the rich, delightful flavor of fine tobacco. There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. And the fun you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. And makes Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Sheriff Miller was more than willing to go along with Clell's demand, so I was released from jail. I hadn't learned very much about the murder charge placed against Clell Thomas, but I knew the local saloon would be a good place to hear the latest gossip. As it turned out, the saloon was owned by a girl named Sally Morgan, an old friend of mine from San Francisco. She had owned a place on the Barbary Coast until the politicians decided they'd help her spend the profits. So she just closed up and dropped out of sight. It was good to see her, and we talked over a cool pitcher of lager beer. <laughs> so Clell threw you out of jail. Yeah. Sheriff Miller doesn't seem to have much to say when it comes to Clell's demands. Well, they're good friends. Clell's a big, important man in this town. He gets whatever he wants. Oh, uh, does that mean he wants to be in jail? I think he does. Too many people are against him since they think he killed Bill Watkins. He'll get out on bail as soon as they have a hearing. <laughs> In the meantime, it looks good, like Sheriff Miller is doing his duty. You know, you're lucky Clell wanted you out of jail, especially after you tangled with Henry. Yeah, what's, what's the matter with that boy? Well, he tries to be like his father, but he can't bring it off. Henry's a weakling. Clell sticks up for him no matter what. I fixed Henry, though. How? Well, one thing Clell doesn't hold with is gambling. Henry owed me a heap of losses, so I threatened to tell his dad if he didn't pay up. <laughs> well, did he ever pay? Oh, he sure did. Yeah? Three days ago, $3,500. Thirty-five? Yep. Well, does the boy have that kind of money? No, but Quell's got plenty. Henry probably cooked up some story. Tell me about the murder, Sally. Well, next to Clell, Bill Watkins was the biggest cattleman around here. Last week, he and Clell got into an argument over a broken fence between their spreads and almost shot each other on the spot. Next day, Watkins was found in his house, shot in the back. People figure Clell took care of Watkins the easy way. They'd had trouble before. Do you think Clell did it? Well, I never thought he'd shoot anybody in the back, but everybody says he must have. That day, somebody saw his horse tied up outside of Watkins' house. Well, how long are you going to be in town, Paladin? Oh, I don't know. Clell's wife hired me to prove he didn't commit murder. Mm. Oh, I'll stay until I find out who did. You know, Paladin, one thing I can't figure out is why Clell doesn't want you to help clear him. Yeah, I can't either, unless he... Sally, you said Mr. Watkins was shot in his home. Mm -hmm, that's right. Is anyone there now? No. <laughs> he lived alone since his wife died. Why? I'd like to have a look around the house. Well, it's locked up. Sheriff Miller has the keys, but... I bet he'd take you out there if I were to ask him to. Would you mind? Not for an old friend like you, Paladin. Here we are. Now remember, Paladin, I ain't doing this for you. It's for Sally, and also for Mrs. Thomas. She's a fine woman. I'm sure she is. And Clell now, he's one of my best friends, no matter what he done. He wouldn't like me showing you around here, though. Sheriff, where was Watkins killed? This very room. I found him lying face down in front of the fireplace here. I figure he was reaching for his rifle when he was shot. I see. Where does this door lead to? Closet. Mm. What are you doing that for? Ain't nothing in there. No. What are you hoping to find, Paladin? I'm not sure. And you won't find nothing. I looked this place over real good. Maybe not. And what's this? Just a loose floorboard. That don't mean nothing, does it? Maybe not. Say, how come there ain't dirt under there? 
<laughs> Look here. Well, I'll be. A cedar wood platform built under that floor. You think it's got something to do with the killing, Paladin? Sheriff, did Mr. Watkins bank his money in Wairika? Well, I wouldn't know about that. You're thinking he kept it here and somebody stole it from him? Could be. Come on, let's get back to town. At the bank, I learned that Mr. Watkins was considered something of a miser. He would make deposits of nearly $10,000 twice a year. When he was killed, he hadn't been in for five months. I went to the jail and found that the sheriff had taken Clell out to Judge Baker's ranch for the bail hearing. By the time I got there, it was almost dark and the hearing was over. The ailing judge was in his study, lying on the couch, resting from the strain of the proceedings. Uh, sit down, Paladin. Thank you, sir. Clell's gone back to town to celebrate. Jury let him out on bail. Yeah, I figured they would. Yeah, what's your business, Paladin? Judge, do you think Clell Thomas would steal? No, no, he wouldn't do that. Why would he? He's got as much money as any man needs. Clell wouldn't steal. But I do think he's capable of murder. Well, I have reason to believe this was a killing for money. Oh, yeah, what makes you think so? I found where Mr. Watkins had hidden a large sum of money. It was gone. Yeah, what's going on outside? Huh. I'll see. Two men are herding cattle into your pasture. Well, why? I didn't order that done. Hey, Judge, that's a stampede. Well, how can it be? Cattle don't stampede in their own background. They're out of control. Look, the gunshots. What's going on out there? I don't know, Judge, but I'll find out for you. Outside, I mounted my horse and raced down to the pasture. But before I could help, one of the men did a foolish thing. He went to the point of the herd and tried to stop them. His horse tripped and he went down. I managed to get my horse into position to prevent some of the herd from passing over him. It was then I realized that the man on the ground was Henry Thomas. The best I could do was make him comfortable. His friend Jug came up and stood nearby. Oh, oh, Is he hurt bad? Oh, yeah, I'm afraid so. Is he going to die? Henry. Henry. You're... You're paladin. You're, you're a friend of Ma's, ain't you? Yes. I, I'm dying, ain't I? Now, you just... Just rest easy. Uh, tell her... Tell Ma I'm sorry. Belladin... Yes? Don't let him hang Pa. It was me. I killed Watkins. I, I needed the money. You still there? I'm here, Henry. Can't see you no more. I, I can't see nothing. Is he dead? He's dead. <clears throat> Jug. This herd of cattle. Why were you bringing them here? It was a bribe. Fifty head. His old man told Henry to do it. Oh, so that was his way to influence the judge at the murder trial. Judge didn't know about it. Jug. You heard what Henry said before he died. Yeah. If you had to testify in court, what would you say? I guess I'd have to tell it the way I heard it. Will you just be sure you remember that? All right, here, give me a hand. I better take Henry back to his father. It's Henry. What about Henry? I told you to stay away from him. That's Henry across my horse. What? He's dead. Paladin, I'll kill you. You listen to me, Clell. I'll kill you with my bare hands. Clell, you stop. The only boy I got and you killed him. I didn't, Clell. I warned you. Let me go. Clell, you listen to me. You killed Henry. What? If anybody killed him, you did. The cattle you were sending to Judge Baker stampeded. Henry tried to stop them. No, Paladin. Don't say that. Don't say it. You knew he killed Watkins. I... 
It had to be him. He took my horse that day. I, I was trying to help him, protect him. It's what a father's for. Is it? I was going to let people think I did it. They'd never have convicted me. Maybe not. Clell, I'll help you with your boy. Uh, no, no. I'll take care of him. I'll take care of Henry. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Oh, hello, hey boy. Uh, did you tell Mrs. Thomas? Yes, I told her. She's, uh, she's very sad now. Yes, yes, she is. I'm afraid that I had to leave when she started to cry. Miss Wong is with her now. Oh, yes, Miss Wong will be very understanding. You have dinner yet? No, I thought I'd go for a walk first. Will you please to follow Hey Boy? Hey Boy, I'd... Please? All right. <laughs> My own room? Please to enter. All right. Yeah, Mr. Paladin, dinner all prepared. Uh, much better here. Why, hey, boy, what a surprise. Did, did you go to all this trouble? Oh, not much trouble. Chef cooked your favorite dinner for me. Crab meat souffle, poulet a la Dennis. What? Poulet a la Dennis. Oh, <laughs> hey, boy, you won't believe this. All the way back, this is the very meal I dreamed about. The very meal. Oh, he's a hey, boy, no. Hey, boy, believe Mr. Paladin, sit down now and have dinner? Yes, hey boy. Hey? Yeah, hey boy, I know how to take care of you. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Half Gun Will Travel by Tom Hanley. Featured in the cast were Ann Morrison, Shirley Mitchell, Ralph Moody, Sam Edwards, Paul Dubov, and Jack Moyles. This is Hugh Douglas, inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.